Howdy y'all, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I make this leather phone case. Um, it comes like this. This is all dandy and lame. <laughs> this adds some personality and some character to your phone case and it's a lot prettier to look at. So to get started, you're gonna need a phone case. Um, this is an iHome phone case. Um, my phone size is a 11 Pro. So that's what this is. I'm just going to take this out of the box real quick. All right, so this is what it looks like. It has a nice felt on the inside, plain um, white. This isn't rubber, this is like a silicone. Um, it has the nice little cover on there. So I get these on Amazon. They don't come in all the phone sizes, so you're kind of limited on to what phone size you can add a leather back to. Now what you're going to want to do is, first step is to take off this white part. So you just peel that off. <laughs> so now you can use this as a template. You move that um, out of the way. We are going to get some two ounce or three ounce leather. Now you don't need very much, you just need enough to trace out the phone. So now you just, you can use a scrap piece of leather. It only needs to be this big. Now this is a little bit sticky. So I'm gonna use the other one that I've used before because that one's not as sticky anymore. So you're gonna wanna place that where you want it. That looks good. You're gonna take a scratch all. Looks like this. And you're going to trace out your design. And now you can see, we now have an outline for the um, phone case. I did it really light. You can do it as hard as you want. Doesn't really matter too much. But now I just take my straight edge and I cut it out. Now I, you can find this brand of phone cases um, on Amazon. You can also, um, I think, do it with other ones as long as it has a lip. I'll show you what I mean by a lip. So see, there's a little bit of a rise part right here that you can like stick something in. That's how, you know, that fit in there. Um, so I recommend finding a phone case that allows you to do that. That just makes it easier. Protects your leather, doesn't get as damaged. So now we're just cutting this out. Okay, and then when you get to this curved part, you are going to want to do that by hand. It doesn't have to be too, too precise, but closer you can get it, the better. All right. All right, so now we need to cut out the rounded edges. I found it best doing it like this. Did you realize I wasn't in frame? <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is I am cutting the corners. So what I do is I just put it right on top, see if it fits. Now this needs to be a little bit shorter. I'm gonna zoom you guys out now so you can actually see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna re-round this edge a little bit better. Check to see if it fits again. So that's not too shabby. So now we're gonna take some sandpaper and then just round out these edges a lot better. Doesn't need to be perfect. And 
then we are going to take an ed bevler. This is just a size one, and we're going to bevel the edges. Alright, now that that is beveled, you don't need to bevel the inside. I find having it flat on the inside is better. Now we're going to recheck to see if it fits. You always want to be safe than sorry. So that's perfect. Don't need that anymore. Um, so when you're stamping, you don't want to have this leather stretch because then you'll need to recut it. It won't fit the same. Um, so take some blue tape that keeps it from stretching when stamping and dyeing. Trust me, you don't want to miss this step, otherwise you're going to have to recut even after you stamp and it's going to look kind of funny. I usually don't do this with a lot of my projects, but with this I've learned I need to be precise. So I'm just cutting that away. Doesn't need to be perfect either. Just got to get majority of this blue tape out. So now it looks like that. Now we are ready to stamp it. So I'm gonna take it over to my stamp um, area. Okay, so I'm gonna use this stamp pattern for um, all of my foam cases that I'm gonna make that I offer to sell. I'm gonna move this over a little bit to get a better view of everything. Um, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is spray it down let that water soak in there. I'm gonna get my stamps out. I'm also gonna get my maker's mark. All right, also what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this stamp. You don't wanna use something like this. You're going to want to outline. That way you get a straight um, line when you're stamping. And you're just going to want to curve that around. Doesn't have to be completely perfect, just good enough to get a good So I moved you guys a little closer so you have a better angle. So the first stamp we're going to use, it is from Tandy. The number is 0709. So that's what we're going to use. Right there. And then we're going to take this stamp, the number is ZY407. That's what it looks like. Now I like to kind of pre-press to make sure I get good um, even distribution.
I messed up there. Dang. Okay. Wow. That sucks. Um, <laughs> we're going to try to fix that. All right, so it's not it's not perfect but that's okay because we're actually going to paint the edges and we're gonna actually going to hide that so i'm actually going to try to take this and smooth that out now i'm going to take my maker's mark actually i'm going to take this stamp Okay, so after letting it dry completely, we are now going to antique gel stain it. Um, this is a vintage gel. You can get it on Amazon or any local craft store. Um, just putting some gloves on so I don't stain my hands. That is very important. Otherwise, you're going to have some orange hands, and that's not, that's not fun. Um, so what I do is I leave the... Um, blue tape on the back that way while I'm adding moisture to the leather it doesn't stretch or expand um, so I'm quickly applying the vintage gel on the leather on the edges um, good healthy amount I think I added a little bit too much <laughs> um, for this small little piece of leather but it will do the trick um, now the nice thing about vintage gel it also adds an antique and a stain all together so you get nice definition while also adding color to the leather. So that saves you at least an extra step. Now I am buffing away the excess um, antique. Now I don't know if all other smiths do this, but I use leather sheen on top of my vintage gel. It just adds a really nice um, finish. It takes away the excess antique that is on top even after buffing. You will see a lot will come off and it just makes the leather 10 times brighter in my opinion. Um, it's a step that I don't skip when I'm antiquing and using the vintage gel. Okay, so after I let that dry completely, I'm going to paint the edges. Um, I'm going to use a really beautiful teal blue it's almost like a turquoise but slightly brighter so the leather paint that i'm using it's angelus it is the best leather paint that i have tried i've tried a few this one wears really well it's really durable and it's it's made for leather so um, i highly recommend it they come in lots of different colors again you can get them on amazon um, i like to get the larger bottles of colors that i know i'm going to use a lot or i have used a lot that way I just saved myself a little bit of money. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the edge of this flat paintbrush to get into each individual scallop. Now this part does take the longest, but for me personally, it is the most satisfying. It's the most relaxing process of doing this. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to skip ahead so you guys don't have to watch me paint for 20 minutes. Alrighty, so now that I got the edges painted, I'm going to take a more detailed brush. It's a lot smaller. It's great for the little tiny detail work um, that I like to do on this specific design. And this is what it looks like. I get both of these paint brushes in a pack, I believe, of 20. It comes with 10 of each. Um, it's linked in my Amazon storefront. Most of my tools I get from Amazon. They're affordable, they're budget friendly, and if I can get most of my leather tools at one place, I will. <laughs> um, so Amazon is honestly really great for budget friendly leather tools like these paintbrushes. So now I'm just going to go ahead and paint those little details of that southwestern symbol. Um, I forgot to mention I get 
my stamps from Tandy Leather. So you can get that same Southwestern stamp from Tandy. You can get it on their website or if you go into store, you can um, see them in person and test them out. That's the really nice thing about Tandy. Um, I think I think all of them do. My local Tandy Leather allows me to test out stamps before I buy it. So that's really nice. You can kind of play around and see if you can create a pattern or a design with said stamps. Um, they have some really cool ones. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead to when I'm done um, painting all the little details on that Southwest symbol. So now that I am done painting, um, I'm going to let it completely dry. You don't want to add a sealant or a top coat. Um onto wet paint because it will smear and it will ruin all that time <laughs> and that precision when you were painting. So now that the paint is all dry, I'm going to use some tan coat. Tan coat is my favorite topper um, and sealant for my leather projects. It adds a really nice gloss, a really nice shine, um, and I just like the way it feels. It's a lot more durable to the touch in my opinion. So I'm just going to apply that to the top. Um, the sponge I'm using, I get those in packs of 50, again, from Amazon. Um, I use a lot of those. I use them to dye. I use them to use my tan coat. So I'm just going to slowly, lightly pressure. I don't want to scratch any of the paint. So just light pressure and spread it along the top. And once the tan coat is completely dry, you can now take off that blue paint uh, blue painters tape Now this does stretch the leather a little bit. So if you have painters tape, that's not the greatest quality. That's better um, I found out But I'm just double checking to make sure it fits and it didn't stretch too much and it does so that's good Now I'm going to use this glue. It is a leather adhesive um, I'm trying out new glues right now, so this one is really running low, so I'm going to be struggling to put the glue on both the back and the front of the phone case and the leather piece that we made. Now you're going to want to get your glue and not struggle like I am right now and add it to the back. You want to spread it evenly, get as close to the edges as you can. That is the most important thing. Um, that your edges are sealed. And once you're done with the back of the phone case, move straight to the back of your leather piece. Again, make sure you get as close as to the edge as you can. That is the most important because if you don't make sure you add enough glue to the edges, the edges will come up and it just won't look as nice and it'll be annoying and it'll eventually need to be taken off or and re-glued or it'll ruin the leather and you'll have to create a whole new one. So make sure you get the edges. Now, once your glue is tacky, you're going to want to adhere it to the back of your phone case. So what I like to do is I like to start at the top. I was just kind of figuring out how I want to do this, but I like to start from the top. And then I will, before pressing down in the middle, I will make sure the bottom is in the correct place as well. And then I will press it down a little bit on the top, but then I will fold it um, down like that <laughs> and press it. I'll use my um, body weight as much as I can and push it flat. That way I can get, you know, all sides of the leather adhered. Make sure I get those edges. And then I'm also going to do the same thing to the other side. But since we have that, you know, that lip, it's just easier to do it that way. So I'm going to make sure everything is in place and you pretty much have a phone case after that. I'm really excited about creating these phone cases. It's just something unique and personable. Um, the one on the left is the first one I made. That one I'm going to be giving to my fiance. Um, this teal one will be mine since he was kind of sad and kind of jealous I made one for myself. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope it was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please comment. Um, if you enjoy this video, like and subscribe. Also, Happy New Year's, guys. I'll see you on 2023.